Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series again and this time I brought forward to a conceptual problem that's uh, given in the topic of methods of impulse and momentum and this is from the objective section passage type question number 28 and 29. So it's about a shell or a bomb which is uh, moving and it gets blasted into three identical pieces and there's some energy analysis done in this uh, situation. Okay, so uh, uh, I suppose there is a kind of of a wrong key that is given in one of the two questions. So we'll try to correct that at the end of the video. So let's have a joyous ride and a blast during the question. Okay, so um, if you want to give it a formal try, please pause the video here, read the question very carefully, word by word, and try to attempt the 28th and 29th question based on the information given. And then do come back for the concept and the solution explanation. So here we go. A 30 kg shell in free space explodes into three identical fragments. After the explosion, the fragments rush apart. Forces of mutual interaction between the fragments are long range attractive conservative forces. Immediately after the explosion, velocities of the fragments relative to an inertial frame are 3i cap plus 2j cap minus 2i cap and 5i cap minus 5j cap. Let me underline something very important. It is relative to an inertial frame. Okay, so he didn't mention what that frame is. It's an inertial frame. If entire energy released in the explosion is converted into kinetic energy of the fragments, how much energy has been released in the explosion? Some four options are mentioned. Next one, after sufficiently long time, when the forces of mutual attractive interactions cease, cease means stop to act, what can be the minimum total kinetic energy of all fragments? Okay, so these are the two questions we are going to likely to answer. Okay, so here we move ahead. I hope you have given it a fair try. Okay, so in order to understand uh, a concept that is embedded in this problem, please do watch the video uh, for an elaborate explanation. So this is a past video that I have done on center of mass and collisions. It's a revision series pro, uh, video in which there were somewhere around 40 to 50 questions on center of mass and collisions. And you can directly go to the 33rd minute of that particular video. Link is in the description or in the I button above. And in case you have uh, already done that, it's all about the energy in center of mass frame. It's a conceptual question. So, And also there are many such questions which are interesting in this particular video. Practice problem were given and for the key and solution of the practice problem please do go through the comments below this particular video okay so i hope you have done that so in short in case you have uh, missed that particular video i'll try my best to cover up few things but it would be well advised to go to that video okay so in a ground frame if i picture that the shell was originally moving with some velocity which i can call it as velocity of center of mass because no external force will be there so after blasting the velocity of center of mass should not change so that should be the velocity with which the bomb originally was moving i'll label it as vcm bar okay and once the blast happens into three identical pieces moving in some arbitrary 3, 3D direction, the velocity of each of these pieces, I'll label them as V1 bar, V2 bar, and V3 bar. And all this diagram, I'm doing it with respect to a ground frame or a rest frame. OK, right, absolute rest frame in theory. So let the inertial frame mentioned in the question be U bar. So a lot of students who do this question, they ignore this word that was mentioned. Please understand the velocities that were mentioned in this passage, these three are not with respect to a ground frame. It's an inertial frame. Inertial frames need not be uh, frames which are at rest. They can be moving, but moving with some constant velocity. That I am thinking as U bar, so which is an information not given in the question. He said it is inertial, but with what speed is it moving was never mentioned to us, constant velocity. That I am taking as U bar at, uh, as per convenience, okay? so. If that frame was itself moving at U bar and it was measuring these green color velocities that were mentioned, then the actual velocities in ground frame should be the ones with this U bar added to them. So V1 bar is not 3i plus 2j, but 3i plus 2j plus that move velocity of the inertial frame. This is something you should not miss when you're going through this problem. Okay, right. So once these velocities are uh, written down, the velocity of center of mass, you can use this formula. And since they are identical pieces, there will be simply addition of these three divided by three. And if my calculation is right, the green part will give you this 2i cap minus j cap, and this red colored one will remain as it is. So it, you can also understand that the VCM bar won't be 2i minus j, but 2i minus j 
plus that inertial frame velocity that he has mentioned, which is unknown to us. Okay. Now, KECM of the system just after the collision. So what is this uh, symbol that I have used? I've used it in the previous video also. So those who have missed it, let me tell you, when I write this symbol, it means it is the kinetic energy of this entire system with respect to center of mass. Okay, just after collision with respect to CM. So if I'm moving in this VCM frame, then these velocities would be looking different, right? It won't be V1, V2, V3. It would be V1 minus VCM, V2 bar minus VCM bar and V3 minus VCM. So that would be a different kinetic energy. And that's what I'm trying to calculate here. Can you see sigma half MI V1 minus VCM, V2 minus VCM and V3 minus VCM. So since I've written sigma, this should be a VI. Okay, so I have corrected it now. Okay, so VI I have written. So you have to sum this. And can you see when you subtract VI, i's with vcm that means you are subtracting each of these terms the u bar gets cancelled so even though if a student reads the question wrongly and forgets to write u bar and u bar here when he subtracts this particular term you see that uh, the u bar actually cancels but that's not conceptually right you might get the answer but you would have gone wrong in the concept and that would be revealed in the next problem wherein the key actually given in the book is wrong okay so once you subtract each of these this one to this one this one to this one this one to this one the u bar cancels and the kinetic energy can be found out to be this value and squares easily calculated one square plus three square here four square plus one square here and three square plus four square here okay so uh, each of the masses would be i think 10 kg each so that's why half into 10 is five so you'll get a 260 joule what is this in the center of mass frame initial kinetic energy is zero and always this blast, which is the chemical form of energy gets getting converted to Ke, will always be a frame independent quantity. That's the lesson you are learning here, that the energy that is created in the form of kinetic energy or chemical energy or the nuclear energy, thermodynamic energy is always a frame independent quantity because of the subtraction, the value of U gets canceled. Okay. So since in this problem, it is mentioned that all the energy is in the form of Ke, that's why we are able to say this itself is the energy created in the blast okay so 260 joule it does match with one of the options that is mentioned so let me mark and then move to the next problem so this is 260 joule which is frame independent answer okay so now let's move to the more contentious or ambiguous or controversial part okay the second part of the question okay so a lot of things on the board i'll explain it slowly and steadily so please stay with me okay now uh, imagine the sum of the masses of the system i'm using a parameter capital M for my convenience during this calculation. Okay, so a lot of it is there. So expanding that KCM, KECM, I remember for those who have forgotten or not listened properly, this symbol means kinetic energy of the system with respect to center of mass. Okay, so we have written this expression in the previous page also. I'm just going to expand it. So when you expand this in general also, it need not be three terms also, right? So it could be any multiple number of terms. So this is a concept I discussed even in that previous video I asked you to watch, okay? So this is for people who missed that. So when you expand this, it's like A minus B whole square, you'll get three terms. The first green part summation would produce the kinetic energy of the system with respect to ground, half MI VI square, that would be the first part. So green color here. The last term is also easy, right? Half MI into VCM square, which is common. So you'll end up having this last term, uh, half total mass of the system into VCM square. The 2AB term is the interesting one. Okay, so this remember it's a vector subtraction whole square. So it is actually going to have two into VI dot with VCM. The two and half get cancelled, minus stays like this. And VCM, which is a constant vector, comes out, gives you sigma of mi vi from this part. Okay. And sigma mi vi by definition of velocity of center of mass can be written as capital M into VCM. So if you take the dot product here, this term would be double of this term with a minus sign. So this boils down to kinetic energy with respect to ground for the system minus this important term. This is called kinetic energy of center of mass. Okay, So kinetic energy with respect to CM can be written always as kinetic energy of a system from ground frame minus a number or you can bring this one this side and write it in general okay and that's why people say that in center of mass frame you can always try to directly write the kinetic energy okay because of this derivation okay the very important one that you can use in further problems also 
then let's move on after a long time out of the initial kinetic energy in the ground frame the kecm will be lost so this we have even seen in the uh, uh, that particular video right so that 33rd minute i asked you to go and check right so always remember in the center of uh, in the in the ground frame if keg is there always the energy that would be lo lost once the entire process is uh, taken for a long time is kecm this is the minimum uh, the, the, sorry, this is the maximum energy that can be lost by any system. Okay, so a lot of it was covered in that concept video. Okay, so if this is the losable amount of energy, then the final Ke that will be remaining after that loss is happening is the subtraction of these two. But this subtraction has already been ascertained as half capital M VCM square. That's what I've written here. So my job in the second problem is to determine this quantity half capital M VCM square. That's the final kinetic energy remaining when these bomb particles go to a large distance when they don't attract each other at, at all. Okay. So, but this VCM square is not a known quantity. You go back and check this VCM. It was a value 2i minus j plus u bar, which is an inertial frame that was not mentioned in the question. Okay. So you can choose different values of that inertial frame that the examiner mentioned and get different values of VCM. Okay. So I'll make you, I'll give you two choices why the answer in the book is wrong. If I had chosen the u bar is zero bar, right? And that's what the examiner might, the, 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 uh, uh, the book might have chosen. Okay, so if u bar is chosen as zero bar, that means that inertial frame is actually a ground frame, then half mvcm square becomes simply this number, which is 75 joule. And that was given as the key. But I think by now you should have seen that why that particular key is wrong. Okay, you, you can't always choose this, right? In order to make it minimum, you can also choose the reverse of that velocity. Okay, so what is this choice that I made? Just let's go back and enjoy it. You see, in order to make sure VCM itself is zero, I can choose U, which is negative of this number. Then in that scenario, the value of VCM becomes zero. That means it's a special case where the bomb actually stays at rest initially. Okay, so the bomb actually stays at rest initially. He never said in the question, the bomb is actually moving. He said in free space. So it could actually start off at rest. Then in that final situation, after all the interactions have been lost, the minimum total kinetic energy can also be zero, need not be 75 Joule. So it can actually be anywhere between zero to 75 Joule. And even it can be more also so by uh, different choices of u bar okay so that's what i wanted to highlight okay so if i were to choose this number such that vcm is actually at rest that means the bomb is at rest then the final key can be also zero so the key for this particular part in the book is wrong which was given as c okay so the answer c is right only if the examiner is considering that the value of inertial frame is zero okay so inertial frame need not mean it need not mean that u is zero okay so what is a better answer if i were the student writing the exam i would mark actually d i need more information to zero in on the exact value of minimum total kinetic energy remember uh, different cases gives you different kinetic energies finally out of all those cases the value the minimum could be even zero joules Okay, and what is that special case? The bomb actually is at rest originally. Okay, I hope you understand. So answer for 29 should be changed to D. It was given as C in the book. Okay, so that's going to be wrong. Okay, so I hope you understood the concept more than whether the book is correct or not. It's a beautiful question given in that book. It's a beautiful book. So you learn a lot even if there is a printing error in the book. Okay, so by dissecting each and every word of that particular problem. Okay, so reading the question is very, very important. And also going through the series that are right now flashing on the screen in this channel where each and every video has been uh, produced by taking a lot of care that each and every video gives you a lot of concepts that you might not have seen and even if they, you have seen them it will try to, i'll try have tried to produce them in a uh, slightly unique manner okay so it's worth your time and please ensure that you spread the love of this channel to more and more people so please do like share and subscribe and keep motivating me in producing the quality work that i think i am doing okay so thanks for staying this long and see you in the next one